In our game today, Bobby Fischer uses the Paul Morphy strategy for chess. What is that? Well, get a big lead in development and open lines of attack for those pieces to be activated. This was played in 1960 at the United States Championship in New York. His opponent, a very strong player, Grandmaster William, L William Lombardi, who has the white pieces. Bobby Fischer has the black pieces. Let us jump right in. E4 is the move played by Lombardi. Fischer responds with the Sicilian, which he always, pretty much always did. Knight to F3 and D6. Now, to understand this game, let's look at this position. If he had played Knight C6, D4, CD4, Knight D4, and black had played G6, or what's called the accelerated dragon, a common response from white is C4. This is called the Maroxy bind, and the idea is to create a bind on D5 and B5, which makes it very hard for black to liberate his position. The reason this is possible is because black made a pawn move on move four. Now let's look at our game. D4, CD4, Knight D4, Knight to F6, attacking the E pawn. And the most common move by far here for white is just Knight to C3, getting a piece out and defending the pawn. But William Lombardi plays the move F3 instead. And the reason he defends the pawn with, with the F pawn is because he does not want to block his C pawn. He wants to play the Maroxy bind in a different move order. So Fisher plays knight to c6, and William Lombardi plays c4, creates the Maroxy bind. There's only one problem. Fisher hasn't made a pawn move. He's made a piece move. So instead of having one piece out, he has two pieces out, which means it'll be easier for him to break the bind because he's focused on development. So it's hard for that bind to constrict him. He immediately plays e6. Now we can already see he wants to play d5 and crack open the position. He already has a lead in development. Knight to c3, bishop to e7, bishop to e3, and castles. So Fisher has castled. He has three minor pieces developed. He's ready to go. Now, uh, white's still okay, and the best move here, maybe he could play bishop e2 to develop a piece, or queen to c2, um, but Lombardi indulges in one luxury too many here and plays the move knight to c2. The strategic reason for this is white has a space advantage, so he wants to avoid the exchange of pieces. That part makes sense. The problem is he's now falling behind in development a little bit too much. He already fell behind earlier, now he's falling behind more, and Bobby Fischer wastes no time. He immediately cracks open the center of the board with d d5. White's king is still in the middle. He says, let's go. He's ready to, to get after it. Cd5, ed5. And here, uh, white could take with the, the e pawn. That was probably a little better than the game. Knight to b4 attacks that pawn a, a third time. Both knights and the queen are, are attacking it. Uh, if white defends with bishop c7, then queen to c7 attacks that bishop. Bishop b3, rook to e8, with pressure down the e-file, aiming at the king. And if Lombardi castled, Bishop to d6, and white is up a pawn here, but uh, black has easily has sufficient compensation for a pawn, threatening bishop h2 check, pressure on the e3 bishop, so on and so forth. So uh, Lombardi instead takes on d5 with his knight, Fisher takes back, and here again you could take with the e pawn, knight to b4, bishop c4, but then knight c2 check, queen c2, bishop b4 check, and uh, he would have to play king to f2. Uh, you'd rather not have your king there, but uh, the problem is if he blocks with the bishop, then after queen to h4 check, g3, then bishop takes bishop with check, king takes, because he can't take with the queen or the bishop at c4 would hang, then uh, queen to d4 check, and black is just crushing here with his pieces about to develop and white's king in the middle of the board. So Lombardi takes with the queen instead. Uh, being down development, you'd love to trade the queens and limit Black's active play, so Fisher's not going to do that. He just plays queen to c7 and prepares rook to d8. He wants to gain tempos against that queen, kick it around a little bit while he increases his own development. Lombardi plays the queen to b5, so how does Fisher continue to threaten the queen? That's right, bishop to d7 gets another piece developed, and now he's threatening knight to d4, which would be a discovered attack on the queen as well as hitting the knight at c2 twice. Lombardi has to do something about that. So he plays rook to c1, defending that knight, but now the knight goes to b4 instead, and here uh, Lombardi gives up the exchange. If he tries to hold everything together by queen to e2, allowing the queen to develop, uh, defend that knight, 
Then Fisher can take the pawn at a2, which hits the rook. When the rook moves, his rook goes to c8 as a rook. Rook takes knight, queen takes knight. And when this is all exchanged, uh, he has two rooks, pressure on the b2 pawn, and black is completely winning in this position. It's not, not even close. Uh, so instead, Lombardi gives up the exchange, even though he has, get, gets a pawn for it. He plays knight takes b4. Fisher takes on c1 with check. And when the bishop takes, then he takes the queen. Um, bishop takes b5 might have been best after bishop takes knight check, king to e2. At least white has the bishop pair as well as an extra pawn to compensate for the exchange. But Lombardi plays knight to d5, which uh, hits the bishop at uh, e7. But Fisher plays bishop to h4 check, trying to get white to play g3 to weaken that pawn structure, which he does. And he takes the bishop at f1, rook takes f1, and now he retreats the bishop to d8, which is the only, every other square it can be captured. He wants to keep that bishop on the board. A uh, bishop to d8. Now, he has a clear idea in mind. What Fisher wants to do is activate his rooks. I mean, he's got the, a rook versus a minor piece, so he wants to activate the rook. White wants to shut that down, keep those rooks from finding any open files. So bishop to d2 is played, rook to c8, threatening to come into c2. So bishop to c3, white is trying to shut down this c file so Fisher can't activate his rooks there. Um, so what is the best way for Fisher to find open lines for his rooks? Well, he makes a beautiful move here. f5, immediately attacking this pawn at e4. Looking to open up lines, maybe the F file, maybe the E, e file. And uh, if white were to take, then after rook takes F5 with pressure on the knight, uh, black's just all over white. Is, white is lost in this position. Black has far too much activity plus the material. So Lombardi plays E5. Again, trying to keep those lines closed. He doesn't want a, any open files that black's rooks can become active on. The problem, of course, by advancing that pawn his knight at d5 is now undefended, which Fisher takes immediate advantage of with rook to c5, attacking the knight. The knight goes to b4 and threats every move, bishop to a5, threatening bishop takes knight, followed by rook takes e5 with check. Uh, so he plays a3 to defend the knight, but then he goes ahead and takes that knight and uh, damages white's pawn structure. White, again, cannot take with the bishop. It looks like he's skewering these rooks. The problem is Rook takes at e5 with check, and uh, black is just completely winning. So Lombardi has to concede the further structural damage by taking with his pawn. Rook to d5. He wants to get those rooks on the squares where they have maximum effectiveness. d5 and c4 are the squares he targets. King to e2, king to f7. The king wants to blockade on e6, keep that pawn from advancing. h4, king to e6, king to e3, and now rook to c8. The second rook begins to activate, uh, and this also limits white's king's available squares. Rook to g1, and then rook to c4. Beautiful placement. Notice how all three of these key pieces are on light squares, and black has a dark squared bishop. Definitely a very instructive moment. Uh, he knows he's safe on light squares. Um, now rook to e1. Big moment here. This gives Fisher the opportunity to transition into a king and pawn endgame with even material. And if you're going to do that, anytime you transition to a king and pawn endgame, you better make sure you calculate it very, very accurately. Many wins have been thrown away by people inaccurately calculating the transition to a king and pawn endgame. Fisher calculates and says, it's good for me, so I'm going to do it. And this is how he, he does it. He gives back the exchange with rook takes bishop, and when the pawn takes, then rook takes e5, check. Remember, white had that extra pawn. So now king moves, rook takes, king takes. So this position with even material is the one Fisher calculated that he felt he could win this position. He had a win. And let's look and see how that win works. After king to d5, what Fisher wants to do, play the king to c4, sort of blockade these two b and c pawns for white. Then he wants to play b6 and a5 and create an outside passed pawn, forcing white's king to chase that pawn. And while he's doing that, Fisher will come in and munch black's kingside pawns. That's his strategy. Let's see how it works. King to d2, king to c4, h5 from Lombardi, 
b6, we see Fisher's plan in action, designed to play a5 to create that outside pass pawn to draw Lombardi's king away. King to c2, now g5. One thing, before he breaks with a5, he wants to advance his kingside pawns as far as possible. So it's his king will eat those white pawns a little bit faster. Um, Lombardi plays h6. If he takes on Passan, it doesn't really change anything. h6, f4, again advancing those pawns, g4. And now we can see this f3 pawn is a little closer to the black king. So he'll be able to, to win it more quickly. And now Fisher is ready to execute his key idea in this endgame. a5, boom, creating the outside pass pawn. B A5, B A5. Now king to B2. Lombardi has no choice. He has to chase that pawn with this king. A4, king to A3. King takes C3, king to A4. And we can see king to D4. Fisher begins to march towards these pawns on the king's side. His strategy has worked to perfection. King to B4 and king to E3. And with the writing on the wall, he's clearly about to eat the uh, F and G pawns. Uh, William Lombardi resigned, and Fisher had a great victory. I hope you've enjoyed this game. See you again soon at Chess Dog. Goodbye.